In this video, I'm going to show you why nosebleeds happen and how to stop them at home naturally. Nosebleeds aren't usually a sign of anything serious, they're common particularly in children and most can be easily treated at home. So let's take a look at the causes of nosebleeds. Nosebleeds can be caused by a number of different things. It's not always possible to identify the exact reason why one occurs. Nosebleeds can start just inside your nostrils. This is the anterior, or at the back of your nose, which is the posterior. These are different types of nosebleeds, and they tend to have different causes. Let's take a look at the anterior nosebleed. The vast majority of nosebleeds are interior nosebleeds, which means the bleeding comes from the wall between the two nose channels. That's the lower septum, just inside your nose. This part of the nose contains many delicate blood vessels that can easily damage. The cause of anterior nosebleeds is sometimes unknown, but they can be caused by a number of things, including picking your nose, particularly if you scratch the inside of your nose with a sharp fingernail, blowing your nose very hard, a minor injury to your nose, a blocked or stuffy nose often caused by an infection such as a cold or flu, sinusitis, an infection of the small air-filled cavities inside your cheekbones and forehead, dry air or an increase in temperature drying out the inside of your nose, hay fever or other allergies, high altitude, excessive use of nasal decongestants, and a crooked nose that's either present from birth or the result of an injury. Anterior nosebleeds are more common in children and are not usually a sign of anything serious. They can often easily be treated at home. Let's look at posterior nosebleeds next. A small number of nosebleeds are caused by posterior nosebleeds, which means the bleeding originates from the branches of the arteries that supply blood to the space inside your nose, between the roof of your mouth and your brain. These nosebleeds are more common in adults and children. They can be more serious than anterior nosebleeds and bleed more heavily. Medical attention may be required. The causes of posterior nosebleeds include a blow to your head or a fall, a broken nose, recent nasal surgery, hardened arteries, medicines that cause you to bleed more easily including aspirin and warfarin, a tumour in the nasal cavity, a blood clotting abnormality such as haemophilia, an inherited genetic condition or something even as rare as leukaemia. Also high blood pressure, hypertension is also more common in people with nosebleeds and may make it harder to stop the bleeding but it's not clear whether they directly cause nosebleeds. So you need to see your doctor if a child under two years old has a nosebleed or if you have regular nosebleeds or if you have symptoms of anemia such as faster heartbeat, that's palpitations, shortness of breath and pale skin or if you're taking blood thinning medicines such as warfarin. You also need to check out if you have a condition that means your blood can't clot properly, such as haemophilia, and your GP might want to test you for haemophilia or for other conditions such as anemia. But you need to go to your local hospital if your nosebleeds last longer than 10 to 15 minutes, or if your bleeding seems excessive. If you're swallowing large amounts of blood that make you vomit, you also need to go to your hospital. If the bleeding started after a blow to your head, or you're feeling weak or dizzy, or you're having difficulty breathing, then the hospital is the best place. By far the most common reasons for nosebleeds are picking your nose, blowing your nose too hard, and because the inside of your nose is too dry, and that's because of a change in air temperature. Nosebleeds that need medical attention can come from deeper inside the nose, and usually affect adults. They can be caused by an injury or broken nose, high blood pressure, conditions that affect blood vessels or how the blood clots, certain medicines like warfarin, and sometimes the cause of a nosebleed is unknown. Certain people are more prone to getting nosebleeds, and these include children, they usually grow out of them by 11, elderly people, and pregnant women. So how do you stop a nosebleed yourself? Well, you can sit or stand upright, but don't lie down. Pinch your nose just above the nostril for 10 to 15 minutes. Lean forward and breathe through your mouth. Place an ice pack or a bag of frozen peas wrapped in a tea towel at the top of your nose. If you require hospital treatment, then the doctors can see where the blood is coming from and they may even seal it by pressing a stick with a chemical on it to stop it from bleeding. If this isn't possible, doctors may pack your nose with sponges to stop the bleeding. You may need to stay in hospital for a day or two. In general, when a nosebleed stops, in the next 24 hours, try not to blow your nose, pick your nose, drink hot drinks or alcohol, 
Do not do any heavy lifting or strenuous exercise and don't pick any scabs. Finally, let's look at how to stop nosebleeds. There are things you can do to prevent nosebleeds and these include avoid picking your nose and keep your fingernail short, blow your nose as little as possible and only very gently, keep your home humidified, regular application of petroleum jelly such as Vaseline to the inside of your nostrils helps to keep the inside of your nose moist. Wear a head guard during activities in which your nose or head could get injured and always follow the instructions that come with nasal decongestions. Avoid overusing them as they can cause nosebleeds. I hope you've enjoyed this video on why nosebleeds happen and how to stop them at home naturally. And if you have, please subscribe and give this video the thumbs up. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy this next video on how to get rid of gout naturally in 24 hours. Thanks for watching and bye for now.